Hi everybody, it's Jeff. Uh, this will be part two of the Austin Armored Car uh, 1918 pattern in Japanese service. In uh, this video, I'm going to do a voiceover and uh, see how it works out here. The first thing we're going to do is uh, fix this uh, King Defender was damaged in the packaging when I got the, the uh, kit. Um, it had a pretty severe crease in it. So I'll show you what I did. And uh, if you want to give it a try, it's entirely up to you. Don't promise the same results. But uh, first thing I do is I cut the part free from the sprue. And um, then I'm going to use a hairdryer and uh, warm it up to try and get the... Uh, get the plastic soft enough to where I can I can uh, manipulate it a little bit so I'll uh, warm it up I usually I had to warm it up three or four times uh, before I actually got it hot enough the way I wanted it so I, I held it in some tweezers and uh, put my hair dryer on uh, high and uh, just gently went over it I ended up doing it three or four times but, uh, you know, heat it a little bit, move it a little bit, heat it a little bit, and uh, continue until you get it to the shape you want. The hair dryers, my hair dryer anyway, is, is very warm. And um, so I ended up putting a glove on just to keep my hand from getting too hot. But uh, after an application of, of heat a few times, uh, I was actually able to get it to uh, to move with no problem. The fender is fairly thin, so this may not work well with thicker parts, but uh, then again, a thicker part may not, may not break on you, like this one did. But a few applications of heat and uh, a little bit of uh, patience, you know, move, moving it and holding it till it sets, uh, I was pretty well able to get it to uh, to do what I wanted it to. Oh. Just just a, a little more heat, I guess. This is this is only the second time I've done a voiceover, so I'm kind of kind of learning as I go just exactly uh, what I want to do. But after a few applications of heat, I was able to get the uh, the fender where I wanted it to. I put, it did have a slight crack in it, so I put some uh, extra thin quick setting in the crack and, uh, you know, I got, did it on both sides to, to get it to stay together. I didn't want the crack continuing. So after doing that, uh, I did it inside and outside. I sanded this down once I had it all, uh, you know, once the glue set up and, and it's, there's an ever so faint white line that runs across the fender, but it, it, I think, you know, with a little bit of primer, that'll pretty well take care of it. But after I got it all glued and give it a couple of seconds, since this is the quick setting, it uh, didn't take long. Then I went ahead and cut the other uh, fender loose, the one that was not damaged. And I put the two side by side just to uh, compare the curve and make sure I was okay. And as you can see, I, th I think it came back into shape pretty well. Um, with a little bit of paint on it, I, I really seriously doubt you'll be able to tell that it was damaged. And I've got a picture here in just a second of the... Uh, the two fenders side by side. There is a white line there, but um, I think, you know, the primer will cover that okay. So I think the fender's good to go. The next thing we're going to do is start on the, uh, on the frame. And uh, I've got parts here to clean up. What I'm going to do is uh, do this all at, uh, like, five times speed and, and just go through it 
let me uh, look at my instructions here real quick. I did make one mistake um, in part in step one, part B19. It clearly says in the instructions not to glue it, and I didn't notice it, so I did glue that in place. It's the very small part clearer to the right end of the end of the uh, frame there. So I may have to cut that loose later. What it is is a mount for a spotlight that will go at the very front. And the angle will kind of have to be adjusted at the very end. So we'll see what happens. You know, it may be just fine the way it is, or I may have to... I may have to cut it loose and move it forward or backward a little bit to, to fit. But since I don't have the radiator and everything in place to to uh, check the fit, there's no way for me to know exactly the right angle. Um, also on step A, uh, there is a hole that needs to be drilled. B27 and B32 uh have a hole. The, the instructions only show a hole in uh, B27, but uh, then it shows that you glue B27 and B32 together. So the hole actually needs to be drilled through both parts. So it's best to glue the two together and then uh, just drill through both of them at the same time. It calls for a uh, 1.2 mil hole to be drilled, but um, drilling the hole uh, actually tore out the side of the plastic just a little tiny bit. So the there is a hole there, but it's very, very small. So uh, doing, doing that will, uh, you know, kind of come through the side just a little bit. It doesn't hurt anything. You'll never see it. So I've, I'm just uh, going through cleaning all the parts. There are, uh, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, looks like 12 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, 12 parts that make up the frame. Um, a lot of these parts are, are not even going to be seen once the, once the, uh, vehicle is built but it you know it's good practice to clean everything up here i'm marking my sprue points with a uh, sharpie and then i go through and and file them or sand them until i'm happy that the the uh, sharpie's gone and then i can tell that i did a you know fairly good job of, of getting rid of it so uh there there's the hole being drilled and like i say it should have been drilled through both uh B32 and B27, but I didn't think about it, so I had to had to go back later and, and get the both of them done, or go through both of them again. So we're just about ready to go ahead and assemble everything. And that, that there's all the parts. So the first thing I do is uh, I start on one side, and uh, check my fit and then I put uh, extra thin on just the one side and I glue that and then I just hold it until it just starts to set and then I just continue on through the down the frame stacking parts and getting one side together it, it doesn't really matter just uh, you know if you've got everything nice and square at this point or not the glue dries slow enough that uh, once you get both sides together, it's pretty easy to, you know, move it a little bit to get everything lined up correctly. I had to clean out a few holes. There, you know, there was a couple of places there where, where the holes were kind of small, so I had to clean them up. This this part here is uh, uh, DA2, and it didn't fit real good. The hole was a little bit tight. So a little glue and uh, just scraping the hole a little bit. It, it fit just fine. So we'll, we'll continue 
stacking parts until we get to the end. It, it's not very complicated. The mini arts are really good about uh, locating marks and things. They're they're small, but they're they're obvious. So once you get the uh, get the one side of the frame done, you can come back and uh, assemble the other side. You know, when, when I do the other side, a lot of times if I can get the joint just right, then I'll go ahead and use the quick setting. I did not attach uh, DA35, the string column, yet. Uh, main reason being is I want to put the frame in a little jig I've got and uh, put some weight on it and let it harden, let the glue harden real good. And I can't do that with the uh, with the steering column on there. So I'll show you here in just a second. But here's the other side going on. Once everything is in and lined all up, then you can go through and just do that other side and make sure everything is setting in the in the um, locating mark. It's not terribly difficult. Just takes a little bit of time. It, this took an awful, you know, uh, it, it didn't take all that long, but it took longer than this. But anyway, uh, I, I've got the frame sides together, and here's my little jig. This is actually a surface plate for the mini art milling machine I used to have that was stolen from me. I still got the surface plate, so I've got a square there. I've got a 90 degree angle. I put the frame in there and put it up against it. This surface plate is about as flat as you can possibly get it and it's nice and square so then I'll set a couple of weights on it just to hold it there so with the steering column in the way I, I wouldn't be able to do this so I'll, I'll leave that set like for several hours I think it actually let it set overnight and uh, then we continued on the next the next morning I took the weights off and everything's nice and firm and uh, your frame's almost done. All you have to do is add the uh, steering column. This vehicle actually has two steering columns. It's kind of a unique vehicle. There's the part that I glued in I shouldn't. Right at the very front of the frame, part uh, B19. So if you're building one of these, uh, keep that part B19 a little you know, loose until you get it all lined up the way it's supposed to go. But yeah, it definitely has a... a an icon there that says don't glue it but I missed it so now we're going to go ahead and uh, put the searing column in doesn't take but just a second it's keyed real well it's got a square so it, it lines it up real well and uh, you just glue it in so that's that's all good to go that is step one complete okay and uh, I'll put that in a box, keep it nice and clean and out of harm's way, and we'll move on to starting on the engine assembly. So, uh, on step two, I'm cutting out the uh, engine halves, which is uh, B44 and B43, the left and right halves of the uh, main part of the engine, and then I've got uh, B58 and B59 that uh, need to be cut out too. Now the the first three parts are going to be aluminum, and uh, B59, the actual oil pan, is going to be black, so I'm going to paint those separately. So that we don't end up with, uh, you know, something I'm going to have to hand paint. I, I a lot of this engine, as I've, you know, looked at other people's builds and things, very little of this engine will be visible. So I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time de detailing it. It's just, uh, you know, the fact that it's there. That that's the, the best way to put it. But uh, I'm going to keep some of those parts separate so, until I get them painted. I'm just Doing this, I think it's at five times speed. 
going through and, and making sure all the, the nibs and everything are cleared off. Now on part uh, B59 it has three locating pins, two on one side, one on the other. And the, the one on the right side was too big and it wouldn't fit in the... Uh, the uh, female hole on, on part uh, B58. So in the end, I actually just cutting cut that off. It still had two locating pins on the other side. But uh, check when you're putting yours together, if you've got one of these, because uh, the two parts, uh, B58 and B59, would not go together uh, until I cut that pin off. Always good to check, you know, before you start painting things to make sure that you've got your uh, got your parts all fitting well. Oh, I spent a lot of time just doing little, you know, double check my fits, make sure everything is good before I glue things together. This is actually the uh, 50th video I'm uploading to YouTube. I've been doing this for five months now. Uh, I'm really having a good time. I think I'm up to 217 subscribers now. I really appreciate you know the, the people that have subscribed. Uh, all of you guys are great. I've met some really great people doing this. I hope to meet a bunch more. But uh, just continue on assembling the engine. And uh, I, I uh, do like I did in the last uh, build I had. Uh, well, on the build before that, I, I keep all the parts, parts that are different colored separate. And I put them in boxes with the paint um, so that I can you know, get everything painted up. I just as soon do everything uh, as an individual part or as sub-assembly. There, there I had to cut that pin off just to get it to all fit. Just a little more cleanup work. But I won't glue these parts together, the, the bottom oil pan, yet until it's painted. So we'll get those into um, containers. I created a spreadsheet in Google Sheets with all my paint callouts on it makes it real easy to uh, you know look look at the instructions and see what color I want and uh, keep all keep all my uh, parts that are the same color together so I've got a box for each color like I've done on my past builds and uh, I keep everything separate until I get them painted I'm sorry there's a lot of dogs barking in the neighborhood I don't know if you guys can hear it or not I think probably the mailman's coming around or something. Probably. <laughs> oh, just some neighbors out, but the dogs sure do bark. Okay, well, just a little bit more and we'll have part, uh, part one, or part two, I should say, step two all put together. This is the actual head in... Uh, I'm just making sure it doesn't have any, you know, sprue nibs on it or anything. There are four tiny, tiny, actually maybe more than that. There, there are a number of uh, PE parts. B29, there are four, and uh, there are four PE part 39 that are supposed to be on the head. And these are extremely small. Um, there's there's no way you're even going to see them. A, a coat of paint is going to, you know, you're you're just going to disappear. So I'm not going to put those on. They're they're four itty bitty tiny little little uh, photo edge parts that are just not not worth the trouble. So here I am cutting out the uh, intake and exhaust and the the water pipes and getting all those ready for part two. Some of these will be painted copper. 
Some of them will be painted uh, rust, and uh, I'll paint those separately, and then I will add them to the uh, to the engine once they're painted. There's there's one part on the engine that's DA14, and I don't know if it's supposed to be a crankcase breather or what, but it's one tiny little piece of plastic, and uh, I of course I drop it two or three times, but. Yeah, I dropped it. <laughs> there it is. Okay. And, of course, I drop it again a couple of times. But I get it on there. It's actually supposed to be black. Yep, dropped it again. But uh, I'll go ahead and spray it aluminum just like the rest of the engine, and then I'll just touch that up because it is so small that, you know, you'd never be able to hold it to paint it. I might need to start doing the uh, camera a little closer, too. This is with my uh, webcam, not my cell phone, which I had been using. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not getting, I'm not quite used to just where it focuses and in the distances and things yet. As you can see, I'm off camera a little bit. But uh, I, I, what I do with the real tiny parts is I take some of the uh, tweezers that have a wide end on them. And I just grab the part and then I very gently scrape toward the tweezers, you know, trying to keep the stress on the part as minimal as I possibly can. And uh, I was going to sand it with that, but I decided to go ahead and switch over to a, a sanding sponge. There we go. You know, the sanding sponge will take care of it. Anytime you have something small like that that just has a little tiny bit of a a nib on it, some extra thin a lot of times will just dissolve it. So there's the some of the copper parts. We'll get those all together. Checking my uh, my list again. I think there's 18 or 19 colors for this uh, vehicle. I've got them all. I had to order a couple of them, but they've all come in. So we're good to go on that. And uh, it won't take once once uh this has just got a few more minutes and then i will uh probably pause the video and then in the next one we will we'll do some uh some painting but basically i'm just cleaning up parts and and getting them uh you know organized by color in the different containers with with the actual paint that'll be used uh, lots of you know I, I spend a lot of time just um uh, cleaning up little little tiny uh you know uh, parting lines and sprue nibs it's just a good habit good practice to get into you know a model can take that extra few minutes you can really turn a model into a real nice model just by getting rid of the the uh, connecting points and the and the parting lines and stuff like that it, it's not that much work I really enjoy doing it, so it, it's it's always a good thing to do. So going through my paints, those are all the paints for for this model. Yeah, it's the rust for the exhaust pipe, so we've got that located. So I've got everything. I check everything off, and I'm not gonna do those little PE PE parts on the on the head of the engine. They're just so tiny, I, I don't see any real point to it. Yeah, there they are right there. It, uh, I, I guess you guys can't see it. That They are so, so tiny that I, I can't work with those. Uh, Mini Art puts a lot of detail in there that, you know, it, it's nice, but you just, you can't see it. Oh. So, Getting everything, I, I put the engine parts on uh, double-sided tape on a on a stick, and I've got most of the other parts all all on the uh, self-locking plate tweezers. The uh, parts, some of them had you know uh, a connector where I could grab those. Others I may have to touch the paint up, but they're so small. Um, I didn't wire any of them this this time. I may on other parts on this build, but. But it's just not worth it because the uh, the uh, 
parts are so small, you know, trying to drill a hole in them, you'll uh, you'll just split the sides. So I've got one more part here, or one more uh, step. Well, part three. I've, I'm cleaning the parts up for three now. And uh, that's a magneto, and that's the uh, intake manifold and the carburetor. And the uh, timing chain cover, the fan, and the uh, belts. And there's a couple of real small PE parts. Or one sm small part and one PE part that still needs to go on. And then I will glue that part to the uh, upper part of the engine. And I'll just spray it all aluminum at the same time. I'm getting the uh, PE part for the, uh, for the uh, timing chain cover now. It's part uh, PE 36. So I'm cutting that out and then I have to trim up a couple of the little nibs. I'm using the back side of one of my uh, Infini cutting mats, the ones I use for cutting my tape. It seems to work real well for uh, cutting photo etch. It's hard but uh, things don't seem to slide around on it too bad. Uh, there's that's uh, my Zuron cutters. I had just a little nib on the PE part I had to trim. Oh, it cleaned up real nice. And then just a few uh, parting lines. That's that's the intake manifold and the carburetor part uh, B57. That'll be painted. The uh, I believe that's painted rust. And then I'll have to paint the carburetor separately. It'll be uh, number four, color four. Anyway, we're going to get the uh, last few pieces all uh, all cleaned up and uh, get it assembled. And then uh, let the glue dry real well. Now the, the instructions on step three, it does say for experienced modelers, you can put spark plug wires on this. Now I have some real fine wire and I have some, uh, well I have copper wire and I have lead wire, but the, the I don't think you're going to be able to see any of it. There's the, the uh, you know, compartment is really tight on this and uh, I don't think there's any point really going into that much detail because there's nothing, nothing that's going to be seen. I may be wrong and we'll, we'll see when we get to that point. But uh, there's there's no point in spending oh, a bunch of time uh, drilling everything and putting putting the wires on it if it's all just gonna you know disappear into the darkness. So I'm getting the the last few parts here cleared up. It won't it won't be uh, too difficult to finish those up. That's the the, the uh, timing chain cover. And there's one real small part, uh, B6, that goes on the front of that. And I dropped that thing four or five times trying to get it. Uh, there it is right there. Trying trying to get it in the little slot on uh, B56. I finally got it, but it is very, very tiny. I ended up putting it on my, uh, sorry about that, dropped my phone. I'm recording on my phone. I ended up putting it on a piece of white tack and then uh, holding it with that so I could glue it. The parts are just so small it's real hard to hang on to them. And you don't want to get your fingers in the glue. So we're, we're almost there. Just a little couple more parts to clean up. There's a part that goes on the top of the timing chain cover, B29. And there's really no locating pins for it. There's just kind of a flat spot. So I put it on there, but it actually has to locate the to the fan belt. So uh, I had to move it just a little bit once uh, I put the fan belt on. Just to just to make sure that uh, everything lined up like it's supposed to. Here's the P, the uh, PE part I'm going to put on next. That's uh, PE 36. I like my uh, wax pencil. It's 
about the easiest way to hold the uh, little bitty photo etch parts. A little bit of super glue and get it where you want it in a hurry because it's going to set on you. I think I went back and I reinforced it with just a little bit more super glue. I'm only getting a extremely tiny amount when I you know on the end of that wire so you really can't even see it once it's all done. There's the fan. There was three connecting points on that fan so it took a couple of seconds to uh, to get everything cleaned up real good. I don't think any of that's going to be seen when when it's all finished but I try hard to, to keep everything nice and neat and clean. Just a little bit of fuzz on there. And as I recall, the uh, the uh, hole for the fan, fan belt on uh, um, a B69 was a little bit small. So I had to actually open it up just a little bit. I've got a, a reamer. It didn't take much, but uh, test your, you know, test fit your parts first, because uh, you know you don't want to get your glue on there and then find out the part doesn't fit. But there's the fan going on. Just typical mini art, very finely detailed. And then that subassembly, I'll go ahead and uh, subassembly B. I'll go ahead and attach to the block, and then I'll just paint that all aluminum at the same time. And I'll come back and I'll uh, brush paint the fan belt. Uh, like I say, I don't think you're going to be able to see it. That part didn't fit real well. I had to do a little scraping. And there's two locating pins on the front of the engine. They're actually little, little lugs that are supposed to go in the back of... Uh, of a B56 and they did not fit so I ended up just cutting them off to get the part to line up uh, it all looks fine it all went together fine but those locating lugs uh, were kind of in the wrong spot or they were a little too big but get everything lined up good and then I test fit and make sure that the uh, oil pan will go on the bottom which it does it all looks fine so I'll put that all back on my tape and we'll put that in the box for the aluminum and put the oil pan back in the the um, box for the black and that's going to do it for this time. I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'll have another one posted here in a, you know, a week or so and I hope you enjoy it. Leave me some comments. I, I don't know if you guys like this style. Where, where you just film it and then narrate it later, or you just assume I talked as I did it. It's easier on me to do it this way. But anyway, have a great day. We'll see you later.